Hello, and welcome to Viva Radio. I'm Lee Hopkins, Director of Viva Institute, and you're listening to Viva Radio, a live radio program brought to you by Viva Institute. Today, I'm chatting with the country's most popular astrologer, Maria Shaw. I reached out to Maria because on Sunday, September 27, 2015, one of the biggest astrological events of the year is taking place, and there's absolutely no one better to talk about it than Maria. If you're new to the Institute, our tagline is Virtual Retreat for the Modern Mystic. And the goal of our organization is to provide online education, radio shows, teleseminars, and other online community opportunities to connect around topics that you'd usually need to travel to a yoga center or a meditation retreat to find. So to learn more about what we do and to connect with opportunities to support you on your path, visit us at vivainstitute.com. So if you haven't heard about it, there's a supermoon eclipse headed our way on Sunday night. And astrologically speaking, sometimes it's called a crisis moon because the moon will be closer to the Earth than the average full moon. What I have learned from reading Maria Shaw's column, and uh, which I have to say, Echo Bodin, who teaches at Viva Institute, uh, keeps forwarding me Maria's columns and has been for the last year or so. And it's amazing because every time, her readings are right on, and I just love them. So I reached out to Maria today because I thought, you know, I would love for all of you to get to hear more about what this is all about. So what she said in her column is that during an event like this, personal relationships are affected, people are more critical than usual, and people are going to feel things a lot more intensely, which means more drama, and people viewing the relationship through new eyes, which can sometimes, you know, be a good thing. So if you don't know about Maria Shaw, although the panel's lighting up right now, so I'm guessing a lot of you do, Maria is one of the nation's biggest experts on astrological events like this and how they can impact your life. To millions of fans and followers, Maria Shaw is known for her amazing accuracy and predictions for Hollywood's hottest stars. She's been on every television network and show imaginable, from VH1 to MTV, Fox and NBC, The Tony Danza Show, Life and Style, and so many more. It's amazing. Clearly, Maria Shaw is one busy woman, and today she's getting ready for a huge weekend event. So she's graciously agreed to join us for a few minutes today. So I'm going to bring her on right now. Hi, Maria. Are you there? I am. Hello from Savannah, Georgia. Oh, is that where you are? I love Savannah. I am. Um, I actually live in New Orleans in the French Quarter, but we're doing a special event here uh, in Savannah. My husband has a paranormal investigation firm or team, and we're taking uh, people are flying in from all over the country. We actually have two, uh, two or four guests coming from the Twin Cities, and we're going to spend three days here in Savannah uh, taking people on ghost walks and historical tours and out to Tybee Island and eating some good low country cooking. Oh, it sounds fantastic. I wish I could be there. It sounds so amazing. It is. It's always a good time, but we do them quite often, so you're on the guest list next time. What's the best way, actually? I should say that up front. What's the best way for people to keep track of the events that you've got going on? Um, MariaShaw.com, or they can always follow me on French Quarter Medium, uh, Maria Shaw Lawson, and and that's where you probably saw some of my my free newsletters and and my posts. I do post about every day on the, the latest astrological happenings, and I do newsletters twice a week. It's all free. They can sign up for my free newsletter at mariashaw.com. Fantastic. Well, you know, that's exactly how I got connected to you, because Echo Bodin, um, who, you know, we work with and runs courses at Viva Institute, um, I wrote to her a couple of days ago and wrote her this long sort of venting email about some things that were going on, and she just forwarded me your column. <laughs> And I wrote back and I said, never mind. <laughs> oh, that's so, great. I love Echo. I, she's she's just a dear person. Everyone that I've that I've met that knows her has just wonderful things to say about her. So I'm yeah, I'm, I was on her radio know. show when she was on 107 years ago. She was kind enough to put me on, and just one of the most loveliest Virgo ladies you'll ever meet. Well, and she thinks the world of you. So. Uh, thank you again for being here. So I know this is going to sound really silly, but there are a lot of people out there who, who are kind of, they wrote to me as soon as they saw this, and I just sent this out like an hour and a half ago, and their phones are lighting up. Um, 
some people wrote to me and just said, I don't even know what an eclipse is, <laughs> but this sounds exactly like what's going on with me. So do you mind starting out and just giving some eclipse basics? Like, what's an eclipse and what's the best way sure. for people to see it? Well, astronomers call an eclipse one thing, but astro- astrologers, it's totally, it's a lot different. Um, we look at it, how it affects our lives, and we have a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. We had a solar eclipse um, on the 13th in the sign of Virgo, and then the lunar eclipse this Sunday, the sun, the moon, will all kind of line up together, okay? And you can see the eclipse sometimes depending in the sky where it will, they'll pass over each other, so to speak, okay? But the energy of the eclipse from an astrologer's level is it affects our emotions, our feelings, and our actions here on Earth. Any time that we have a lunar eclipse, it always brings something to light. There's usually a question that's answered, a change that's being forced to make. Um, sometimes it brings secrets out. It, sometimes it'll bring clarity. And usually it has to do with an ending of some sort. But endings bring new beginnings. So the, the solar eclipse we had on the 13th, a new moon, new moons, you start new things. Full moons, which is the one on Sunday, the lunar, we finish up what we started. We get our answers. And uh, there's a lot more clarity. But the closer the moon is to the Earth uh, than the average full moon, which we have, we had last month, we have Sunday, and then we also have on October 27th, we have three super moons in a row, which doesn't happen very often. And so the moon is going to be closer to the Earth, and everybody's going to be more, um, uh, more psychic. Their, their emotions are going to be intensified. So it's going to be quite, quite dramatic. Sounds incredibly dramatic, and you know it's funny because um, a friend of mine on Facebook mentioned that she said she didn't know anything about a crisis moon coming, but she and her life is, as she put it, 99% calm most of the time, but suddenly she said it's like a Broadway run of drama. So, is it that people are feeling things more intensely? Is it also that just energetically things are shifting? How does that work? Yeah, well, the closer the moon is, like I said, the more we feel it. I mean, the, the moon rules emotions, it rules the tides, right? And so the closer it is, the more intensity we feel from that. Uh, you know, they always say people go crazy uh, around full moons. Hospital waiting rooms are filled. More babies are being born. Full moons create action, and because the moon represents our emotions, our emotional side, our emotions are going to be are heightened, our feelings. And so it, because this full moon, this eclipse is in the sign of Aries, which is ruled by Mars, and Mars is the god of war and violence and activity and energy uh, and sex. <laughs> it, it's going to mm-hmm. be a very intense one. But I always look at things in a positive way. Even though this, this full moon may bring out some secrets and maybe some things that you may not want to deal with, at least those are out in the open so then you can make good choices and there's going to be more clarity. This full moon speaks a lot to our relationships and our commitments that we have with people because it's sandwiched um, on the outside. The, the, both of the eclipses are, are sandwiching the, the autumn equinox that we had on the 23rd in Libra, which rules relationships and partnerships. Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Libra. So everything this month is about our commitments to other people, our relationships, who's staying, who's going. Uh, and your relationships are about emotions. They don't make logical yeah. sense sometimes. So I think yeah. we're going to see a lot of changes and a lot of intensity. Now, for people that are empaths, they're going to feel this much more than the average person. And don't let them upset your status quo. You know, they say about 20% of the world uh, are made up of empaths. I think we're all intuitive, but there's some that are much more stronger than others, and those people will be affected. But the signs that are going to be the most affected are Aries, Libra, Cancer, and Capricorn. And wherever the eclipse falls in your astrology chart, it was where you're going to have most of the change and the most clarity. Wow. So my birthday is coming up in two weeks. So for me, it's going to be particularly intense, it sounds like, or for anybody who's got a so birthday. It, yeah, if, if you're a Libra, if you're a Libra, then it has an awful lot to do with your relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but it really also depends on your whole chart because you may not be a true Libra. In astrology, we all actually have three signs. We have a sun sign, a rising sign, which is based on our hour of birth, a moon sign, which is where the moon was when you were born. So you have to take yeah. everything into configuration. 
Well, and my moon is in Aries, so and this is an Aries. Oh moon. well, it's, you're you are going to be an emotional, an emotional high. Let's think positive. You are going to be emotionally all over the place. <laughs> I, I should just walk around wearing a warning sign. <laughs> or go to the spa well, you know, weekend. Go to the spa you know, weekend and relax. <laughs> That sounds so good. Well, you know, actually, I was going to ask you, you were, you're talking about the fact that this really impacts relationships, and I've noticed a lot of people are going through major, major career shifts over the past week, um, people who are leaving jobs, who are being fired, who are being offered promotions or going to a new place. So is it affecting career as well? Well, you have to think of relationships, not just in terms of your lover, your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, it also has your relationship to your career, your relationship to that employer. That's a relationship, your relationship to the, the, the employer that you work for, uh, your relationship to uh, a group. So you may say to yourself, do I really want to do this anymore? Do I really want, want to uh, be the president of um, my condo board? No, I don't want to do this anymore. That's a relationship that you could end. That's where you may have some drama, depending on your chart. You know, same thing with the, all the career shifts. There's a lot of people, like you said, I've had a lot of readings this last week of people that are ready to make job changes. And and part of this is Mars just went into uh, Virgo, and it'll be there for six weeks. So all of us have a new task that the universe is handing us this week. And it's a, usually about work, about job, because Virgo rules your work and what you do. So a lot of people are contemplating this. But I, I do have something I want to say, because if you were to start a new job when Mercury is retrograde, it's likely not going to work out or, you're, or you won't stay as long as you think. There'll be some adjustment. It would be better to hold off and start it after October 9th when Mercury goes forward. Unless you were born during a Mercury retrograde. And, you know, Mercury goes retrograde three times a year. Those people thrive. For the rest of us, I would be cautious with making any changes uh, from September 17th through October 9th. Okay, this is great. Now, if, can someone, for example, accept the job offer now but then not start until after the 9th? Or is it really about yep, making Yep, they can give them a two-week two week notice. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't stop your life. You know, you, I mean, you have to... Function. I mean, if you're offered this great job and they say we need you tomorrow, you have to start. I mean, you're going to. You can't say, well. So what will happen with that is you may make some adjustments. Once you get there, it may be, oh, I didn't know I had to do this. So make sure that there's a lot of clarity with your contract. You know, make sure that the communication is right on because Mercury rules communication and contracts, among other things. So just make sure that you, you understand what you're getting into and that you, there's no uh, mis misperceptions. Got it. Well, so what do you recommend that people do right now with all of these intense shifts that could happen? What should they do to remain calm? Does it have to be dramatic for them? It doesn't have to be, but I would say that a lot of people get pulled into other people's drama. So one of the things you can do this weekend is maybe do a retreat, you know, just, just a staycation. Stay home, focus on other things. During the Mercury retrograde, it's a good time to redo things, you know, have, um, uh, you know, home projects that you can work on. Focus on one thing and don't get involved and let other people upset your, you know, your equilibrium. You know, if you're happy, don't, I'm not everybody's going to have a crazy weekend, but a lot of people are. If you have a lot of drama, kings and queens and people that want to get you into their soap operas, steer clear of those people, you know, this weekend. They're going to be calm by the 30th, but they're going to over-dramatize everything. If you feel all this intensity, then you may be an impasse, and you may need to center yourself, spend some time in nature, do some grounding work, um, work with your gemstones and crystals uh, that ground you, and focus on one thing. You know, don't, don't try to be so scattered, and don't over-schedule yourself. This is fantastic. And, you know, I have to tell you, I've, I don't know that I've ever seen so many people call in for this. So this is obviously speaking to a ton of people in addition to the fact that it's you. So I just want to thank you because I know how busy you are. I'm wondering before we go, given that you've got a, a big event this weekend, are you going to do anything different to prepare for it than you normally would given what's going on? Well, I'm buying a big a tub of margarita mix. And I have my blender downstairs, and I'm headed to the store right now as soon as I hang up to get uh, some to-go cups. <laughs> I'm going to be, love... be around some great people, and we're going ghost hunting. So I think I think that'll be dramatic enough. But, you know, we're in a great city, and uh, we're just going to chill and have fun and not take anything too seriously. I think that's part of the key, you know. 
don't sweat the don't sweat so much stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff because it's just going to be over dramatized. But I am, if I can, I am going to be doing um, one question readings. If people want to know where the eclipse falls in their chart, uh, if they want to know what their their message is for the universe, what the what the new task is, I do have an um, offer on my website at mariashaw.com where they can click on Ask Maria, and they can order a one question reading, and then I record it and I send it back to them and and, and can tell them specifically how these aspects are going to affect them. And they can always book a phone reading, too. Oh, that's great. And I also wanted to mention before we go that um, for anyone who lives in the Twin Cities, you're going to be giving a December 12th class. Is that right? Yes, on December 12th in uh, Roseville, Minnesota at the Radisson. Uh, It's my famous, people love this class, Are You an Empath? There's four different types of intuitives. And we're going to test everybody that comes to the class. Um, and then we're going to dis- discuss the four different types of intuition, how to use it, how to protect it, how to trust it, and then we're going to do different ways, uh, teach people different ways to enhance those. Because everybody's intuitive, but if you know what type of intuition you have, then you can focus on expanding that rather than off in a in a different direction. And then you can harness that energy and use it for you know your highest good and that of other people. But that'll that'll be um, at the uh, Radisson in Roseville, but it's by ticket only, and I have about 12 tickets left. Uh, that always sells out, and then I'm doing a crossing over gallery where I connect with people from the other side that evening, as long as as well as my uh, predictions for 2016. And tickets can be ordered at MariaShaw.com. Oh, that's great. And maybe when we get closer to the end of the year, it would be fun to have you back on because I know people have loved it. So thank you so much for your time today. Go out and get your margarita next. <laughs> and, I'll have uh, one for you. I'll have one for you and thank you. <laughs> I love that. Given my moons and Aries and uh, suns and Libra, I've got some work to do. So I'm, Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks so much for coming on. Have a great weekend. And thank you, everybody, who has joined us today. To join us for more shows like this, you can find us at vivainstitute.com. Have a great weekend, everyone, and happy moon gazing. Stay safe. Take care.